Hi, I'm Pat and welcome back to my garage. Today, the BMW i8 is driven up on these wooden blocks in order to gain access to this side of the car because we're going to install something very cool. When I first seen the Edo project, Edo Motorsports BMW i8, I was blown away. I wondered, what was that thing attached to the side of the car? It looked like a little side splitter, but it had a very interesting angle to it. My eye was instantly drawn to these side splitters with this very cool angle. I reached out to Ito Popkin, the designer, and I said, Ito, how do I get a hold of these side splitters? He let me know that they weren't in production yet, but that if I was interested in purchasing the prototype that he had installed on his car, he would see what he could do. Well, about a month later, they're in my hands, and I'm very happy to have them. Today, we're going to install them on my BMW i8. These side splitters not only have an aesthetic appeal, but they also have a practical use, and that is preventing debris from entering the airbox of the BMW i8. As you can see, just in front of the rear wheel arch is a small cavity and a small grate this is the area where debris enters the intake of the BMW i8 and ends up in the airbox. After just 10,000 miles, you could see the debris in my air filter in my BMW i8, just from normal driving. Before we get started with our installation, let's take a weight measurement on these side splitters. My scale shows one pound, 5.4 ounces. That's 21 ounces, 606 grams, or 0 0.606 kilograms. At the front, inboard side of the side splitters, there are six holes. I purchased number eight by half inch stainless steel sheet metal screws for these holes. Towards the back of the side splitter, on both the inboard and outboard side, I purchased these number 10, 3 quarter inch long stainless steel sheet metal screws. We will need to drill into the I-8 in order to mount these screws. I also have an 8 millimeter socket with a hand driver, a Phillips head screwdriver, short, and this removal tool in order to remove a plastic rivet. The 8 millimeter screws will be attached here and here, the plastic rivet here, and as you can see I've laid out the rest of the hardware so that we can make sure that we have the correct size screws lined up and prepared to be screwed into the I-8. To begin the splitter installation, we need to remove some existing hardware under the BMW i8. Now I'm on the driver's side, and we'll notice first, there's a little plastic rivet here. Just behind that rivet is an 8 millimeter bolt. And then on this side of the i8, we need to remove this 8 millimeter bolt. All these are very easily accessed if you make sure that you drive up on some blocks. I didn't use my lift because my lift would actually impede my access to this part of the I-8 because I'm going to be mounting screws in this area. First I'm going to use my rivet removal tool in order to remove the plastic rivet. We want to hold on to this rivet so that we can reinstall it after the splitter is installed. Next, we want to use our 8 millimeter socket in order to remove this bolt and this bolt. Because I'm going to have to drill some small holes into the bottom of the BMW i8, 
I have some masking tape here. I'm going to go ahead and cover this area so that I can mark off my holes and make sure that I drill correctly, but also prevent any type of drilling from scarring the surface. So this will do two things. It'll protect the surface besides the hole that I'm drilling through it, but it'll also allow me to mark off the area for where I need to make those holes. Next, I could take the side splitter and position it into place and make sure that I have enough tape covering my area. So yes, the tape extends beyond the very front of the side splitter, so I'm good to go. I'm going to use a 7 inch drill bit on this right angle drill. The reason I have a right angle drill, well, I don't have that much clearance under the car to work. If you were able to get your car up higher, a regular drill would work. But today, I get to use this special drill that I've had in my inventory for quite a while. Our next step will be to line up the splitter so that the oblong holes line up with the holes that we took the 8mm bolts out of. So let's do this first on the inboard side. And we just want to get it hand started. There we go. A few turns is good. Now the outboard side. Excellent. Now it's held in place hands free. Now that the side splitter is held in place with the factory hardware, just gently, we could see that there's a significant gap between the body and the side splitter. We can see each of the individual holes and where they will need to be drilled in the body. So we're going to need to position this into place so that these holes aren't too far out but they're just inside where the tape is located. So what we need to do is tighten things down at the same time making sure that this is in the right position. Another thing we can look for is underneath the I-8 this inner lip curves upward. So this part of the side splitter should be positioned just where that starts to curve upward. So let's tighten everything down and then we'll make sure that this is lined up exactly where we want it to be. Once I feel that everything is lined up appropriately, I can start to tighten down the factory bolts. Some of the critical areas we need to pay attention to are back here. We want to ensure that this part of the side splitter doesn't stick out too much or be inboard too much. We also want to make sure that as we lift the side splitter into place that it forms a good connection with the existing black piece that's under the bottom of this part of the body. Finally, we want to make sure that we slide this part of the splitter into place so that we no longer see the tops of those holes. Now that I've temporarily mounted the side splitter in place, I can make sure that it's lined up correctly by looking at the very front. There are just uh, small ridges in the body panel and those line up with the ends of the side splitter. So at this point I can take my center punch, place it in the hole, and give it a good tap. And then I can drill in that location.
Next, I could take my number eight screw and install the front of the splitter. I don't want to over tighten this screw because I'm tightening it into plastic. Now that we have our front screw installed, we can line up the back of the splitter. Now the oblong holes under here allow us to move the splitter in or out depending on how we want to adjust this flush fit. So we already know that the very front of the splitter, once the screws are in place, are going to hold it up. So we can move the very back of the splitter to align it up with the rest of the body panel. So find a good spot and go ahead and tighten down those eight millimeter bolts in the back. Now for me, I want to make sure that I don't have too close of a fit at the top and less of a fit at the bottom. So I can press up on the splitter in the location where I'm going to make future, uh, future holes <laughs> in the body and I could line up the very back to ensure that I don't have too much of this part uh, pushed in at the very bottom. So for example, if I push it in too far, then the top sticks out and the bottom sticks in. But if I pull it out until it's all nice and flush, then I can go ahead and tighten my eight millimeter bolts Okay, so one last time I'm going to apply pressure, or I'm going to put the additional screws, and then make sure that everything looks good from a fit perspective, and it does. And if we see from this angle, everything looks great. And once again, once I release where I'm going to put the screws, everything sort of falls away. But once I press up, the location where the screw holes are at, everything fits just perfectly. Our next step in the process is to go ahead and install the rest of the screws. Now, I'm going to install one of the middle screws first. That way, the, the, it's supported closer to the car. Because as I'm slowly mounting these and then I go back, uh, things may shift. So I like to install one of the middle screws. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, one, two, three. Actually, I'm going to pick this one here because it seems to be equidistant between the front screw and that back bolt. So, I'm going to take my punch, I'm going to put it through the splitter, and I'm going to push up. I'm going to verify on the outside of the splitter that everything looks exactly where I want it to be placed. Looks good. And I'm going to give it a tap with the hammer. And then that way, the drill bit has a place to sit and not move. So I'm going to find center with the drill bit. There it is. And then I can slowly start to drill into the plastic. There we go. I'll grab a number eight screw. And now that is secure. I'm going to verify that everything looks excellent, again, where that side of the splitter connects. So, at this point, I can go ahead and complete the rest of the holes up towards the front, and then we'll work on the back next. Excellent. Now I'm going to start 
with these two in the back, we still have one more number eight before we get to the number 10 screw. Excellent. So here's a number 10 and here's a number 10 over here. <laughs> this one's a little tight. I probably should have drilled a bigger hole. But hey, now we're at the stage where we actually need to remove our tape. So everything seems to be exactly where it needs to be. Everything lined up very well. So I'm going to start loosening things. I don't have to completely take everything out because I should be able to tear the tape out without having to take everything out of place. So. So I'm going to have to drill a bigger hole for this screw in the back. Let's see. So let's widen that hole to a 9 inch. Excellent. <clears throat> then finally we'll take our plastic rivet and insert that. And then press it to lock it into place. Excellent. So we have this number 10 screw. We have this number 10 screw and then we have all the number eights all secured. So this splitter is definitely not going anywhere. Here we have our side splitter with the excellent angle right here. Everything is nice and flush here and this follows the line of the car perfectly. Wow. Now that we've completed the driver's side installation, we can start on the passenger side. I'm going to go ahead and uh, loosen up the 8 millimeter bolts, remove the plastic rivet. I'm going to go ahead and put the masking tape along the bottom of this rocker panel. And then I'm going to uh, bolt this up to the car gently using the 8 millimeter bolts. And then we can line up all these other screw holes and we can go ahead and drill and install our number 8 and number 10 screws and we'll make sure everything lines up perfectly as we're going along. And then we'll remove this plastic rivet Now we can place our splitter 
under the vehicle. And we're going to gently install the eight millimeter bolts. Excellent. Next, we'll move up to the front of the splitter. And we could see here at the front of the splitter, um, as we did on the other side, the width of this flat portion of the uh, rocker panel cover here is the same as the width of the end of the splitter. So we should be able to bolt this into place as is. We also want to make sure that everything lines up exactly where we want it to. As far as fit the rest of the I-8. So, I'm going to come back down towards the bottom end of the splitter here and uh, I'm going to make I'm going to tighten some things. I'm going to tighten these two uh, eight millimeter bolts and verify that the splitter is resting exactly where I want it to as far as the body's concerned further down. So I just found something out. Uh, when I was trying to lift my splitter into place, it did not want to stay outside of this black strip. And I needed to go inside. There are bolts in here, eight millimeter bolts as well, that you can loosen up and therefore move this plastic strip inboard or outboard. If it's moved inboard, then as I pick this piece up and in, into place, I need two hands to do this right now, um, this piece will secure the body panel, this black piece on the body panel, the trim, into place. So, for example, as I push up, I can make sure to tuck this black piece underneath and therefore when the splitter is bolted into place it's seamless and makes a good connection um, but yes there are bolts back here in order to adjust this black piece to make sure that things fit together very well and just one more note I've noticed that I can actually come forward a tiny bit or back a tiny bit and I'm noticing that the best thing to do is to see how the top portion here lines up with this black strip. And if you come too far forward and bolt it into place, it doesn't seem to mesh tightly with that black strip. So I'm gonna push back on the splitter until it's flush with um, the, where the wheel well is. And then when I push up into place, Everything lines up and meshes nicely. Okay, I'm gonna make sure this is back and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten my eight millimeter bolts.
fitment looks good. I just don't want to make it too different from the other side of the car. So I'm going to check on the other side really quick. So I'm seeing... That would be the best symmetry from the other side. So I may need to loosen I may need to loosen this piece a bit more. And I may have to shim it up a little bit later. We'll see. There we go. That looks very good. Okay, so I will start on this side at the front so that I can secure this loose end by using my punch and through the part. And I'm going to make sure that is in the correct position. Everything lines up correctly. Okay, grab my hammer. And that left a nice indentation. So I'll go ahead and drill this hole. Let's see if I can feel the indentation first. Yep, that's right there. And we'll just slowly drill the hole. At least this way we can get things secured to start off with. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Okay. So we'll keep going on down the line. Actually, we're going to do what we did on the other side, which was go to about here. So now we have our 10 millimeter, or I'm sorry, we have our, now we have our number 10 screws we have to drill for. Number 10 here, number 10 here.
And last time we drilled this hole on the other side, we couldn't really turn the screw very far in. We'll just make sure that's still the case here. Yep. <laughs> All right. So we'll put the bigger drill bit in the drill. Yes, excellent. Okay, so now we want to remove the screws and pull the tape out. Now we can tighten our last screw and also make sure that our 8 millimeter bolts are tight and then insert the rivet. There we go. Oh, she doesn't want to go in easily. There it goes. <laughs> All right. So that takes care of the bottom side. The only thing I want to verify is fitment. And everything, everything fits well up here. Now I did loosen a couple bolts back here. And uh, I may want to just give snug them down a little bit because they're still loose it's going to take my eight millimeter and find those bolts and snug them down Very good. Well, I got to say, this is one heck of an improvement. <laughs> I'm really impressed by these. Um, this is definitely, in my opinion, one of the best looking options I've seen on the i8 so far. I'm so very happy to have these on my car. <laughs> Huh. So on that note, let's see. I would predict about 30 to 45 minutes per side to install these if you're moving at a decent pace. Obviously, you've got to set the car up. You've got to be able to get at the right height, get all your tools together. It could be a two to three hour job if you really take your time, but it could be an hour and a half as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up please consider subscribing and please consider purchasing these side splitters from Edo Motorsports. Edo Popkin has spent a lot of time developing these, designing these. 
These are great. I'm glad they're on my car. At least for now, I'm the only car in the world that has these. <laughs> but when they go to production and you start purchasing them, I'm going to see other ones out on the road. And I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.